Hi there, I'm Elena Sanino, and I am the author of Inhabit Your Joy, A Book of Nudges, and I am coming to you today in my home office looking out at my field of wildflowers outside my windows, and I'm just so delighted to get to share with you today uh, a bit of the introduction of the book, a little bit of information about the nudges that are in this book and what is a nudge even, and then an actual nudge from the book. So if you're ready, I would love for you to join me on this journey. And it starts when I remembered my dad once saying to me that I was always someone who could do anything I set my mind to. I love my dad, <laughs> but over the years I've realized that he was only partially correct because my mind was never the key. The key was something even more powerful. The key was how I inhabited my dreams, how I inhabited my truest self, how I inhabited my joy. Inhabiting my joy came easily for me, except for when it didn't. <laughs> On those days, which let's be clear, were entire seasons of my life, I was my own worst enemy. Because as natural as it is for me to inhabit my joy, I'm also an Olympic level overthinker and catastrophizer, which is why I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, and as the daughter of a neurosurgeon, that inhabiting your joy has nothing to do with your brain. Sorry, Fabi. Yes, your brain is a powerful tool. And yet this book, has very little to do with the brain. The intention of this book and my invitation to you is to help you realign and reorient to this key because it already lives inside you. It always has and always will. The key to inhabiting your joy is you. This key showed itself to me several years ago. I just started my day at school and I got a message to call my doctor's office. I get on the phone and he says, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're pregnant. My response might surprise you because at that moment I'm angry and I start crying. This should have been one of the most exciting moments of my life. My entire life I dreamed of two things, to be a teacher and to be a mom. But this was petrifying news because I had also been told that this would never be possible. For years, I had heard that I'd probably never get pregnant, and even if I did, it wouldn't be viable. My doctor heard my sobs and knew that these weren't happy tears. And after a moment, he said something that I've never forgotten. You have a choice to make. You could grieve, or you can celebrate until the day you can't. As soon as he said it, I knew I was going to celebrate, that I was going to choose to be on this journey, no matter what, without any real certainty. This phone call is a big deal because six years earlier, I handled another phone call very differently. There I was, six years before, in my bedroom inside my apartment. The phone rings. This time it's my oncologist. I have no idea the words he actually said, but the message is clear. My Hodgkin's disease is back. I've been down this road before. The first time I had stayed optimistic, always hopeful, but at that moment I was angry. The room went black and I felt myself falling into this deep, dark hole. I entered what felt like my own personal war room and then proceeded to spend the next six months doing everything I possibly could to protect myself and survive cancer. And I did. I survived. But something else happened along the way. I spent those next six years, really, until that other phone call, in what I now call survival mode, looking over my shoulder, wanting to move forward, but always wondering. Wondering if a cold was a symptom of a recurrence. Wondering when it was going to come back wondering when the other shoe was going to drop. But all that changed when I made that choice to celebrate on that call. 
And as easy as that choice felt, I had honestly no idea where to begin and how to celebrate. So I took it one step at a time. And this was one of the first of many nudges that I received. And so let's talk about what is a nudge and why. My inclination is to go deep in just about everything. I'm one of those people who can make meaning out of anything. This is a fabulous ability to have when you're a life coach like me, but sometimes it makes life a little more complicated than it needs to be. Have I mentioned that I'm an Olympic level overthinker and catastrophizer? Send me a text that says, please call me, and I'll likely start to wonder if I did something wrong. Yes, I'm that person. I'm also the person who starts to worry when I see a missed call from my dad in the middle of the night, which isn't really the middle of the night because he's in Italy and six hours ahead and the call was usually a butt dial. Sometimes we just need a nudge, a gentle knock, knock to the heart, a reminder. A nudge is concise. It meets you where you are. It's easily accessible and it turns your walls into windows or doorways. A nudge is a pattern disruptor. It helps you take a step forward. And these nudges are organized into categories. Be rooted, be curious, be alive. They're intended to help you get out of your head and access a moment of thriving and yes, joy. Because the key to inhabiting your joy is to allow the big and little moments of aliveness to touch your heart. These nudges won't make the hard stuff go away but they create an important disruption in the, all the mind activity, AKA drama, which is sometimes all it takes to come back to what matters most. So let's explore a nudge, shall we? The one that I chose for you today is Be Alive number 14, What Would Feel Delicious? And each nudge is organized with a little bit of a story and then the nudge itself. So I have a favorite question that I like to ask myself, that I love to ask myself, a question that is a game changer for cultivating the quality of life that you want to feel more of on any given day. And although I've loved it for a while, it became one of my go-to tending practices during the pandemic. There I was on a random morning in February, 2020. I was used to working from home prior to all things COVID, but I was tired tired of uncertainty, tired of overthinking. And I remember getting up getting, and getting ready for the day, pulling out another pair of yoga pants and a Zoom ready top when I paused. And my favorite question whispered itself to me, what would feel delicious? The answer came out of nowhere. Okay, that isn't true. The answer came from deep within me. And the answer led me to open my jewelry drawer and pick up a red velvet pouch that had previously sat unopened for a very long time, a pouch that contained my great grandmother's pearls. As I put them on my neck, I heard my mom's voice when I was younger telling me that pearls needed to be worn to maintain their shine. And as I closed the clasp, my heart smiled. I'd asked a question and my inner teacher's answer connected me back to generations of strong women from my great grandmother to my grandmother, to my mom and to my aliveness. This nudge connects you with what lights you up so that you can inhabit your joy on any given day. It offers you a way to be curious and invites you, excuse me, I'm getting a little, <laughs> to gift yourself self-love. So here's the nudge. Pause for a moment. Take a breath in and out and ask yourself, what would feel delicious in this moment? Allow your heart to answer the question and know that the answer almost doesn't even matter. Maybe you bring it forward or maybe you can't, but just notice how you feel when you answer the question and allow an answer to bubble up inside you. Thank you everyone so much for allowing me to share this nudge with you from Inhabit Your Joy. I would love to hear how this nudge lands and what emerges for you. You can find me at elenasonino.com. All the information about the book and I would and on Instagram at elenasonino. Bye for now.